Do you consider yourself a high achiever? Smart, driven, highly successful? I am so excited to have you. My name is Julia Arndt and I'm the host of the Stress Podcast. I will help you develop your stress resilience the same way you've developed your workplace superpowers. Learn peak performance tools to thrive at work and in your personal life. Let's get started. Do you always receive last minute requests? Do you always work after hours because during the day you are busy helping other people with their priorities? And are you pretty busy pleasing other people while forgetting about yourself? That's totally okay if you are answering yes to any of these questions because you're not alone. Many of us are having a hard time to set boundaries, which is why I recorded this video for you today. In today's video, I want to share a really, really simple four-step process with you on how you can start setting boundaries at work and stop people pleasing. So let's get started. Hi, and welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Julia Arndt, and I'm a peak performance coach and stress management trainer. And I'm really excited to dive with you today into the topic, how to set boundaries at work. I truly believe that setting boundaries is becoming a skill that is more and more important in our today's always on world. And it is a skill that you need to learn and you need to practice. So it's something that you might not have learned in the past and something that you're currently struggling with. When I start thinking about this video, I actually went over to my Instagram account and I asked you the question, what is the biggest challenge that you are currently facing when it comes to setting boundaries at work? And I really, really appreciated all of your amazing answers. So let's take a look at a few of the different answers that I received. For example, you said, letting go, everything seems important and you want to do it all. So yes, prioritization can be super, super tricky when it comes to setting boundaries because we might not really know what is really important and what is not so important. We might not ask the right questions or we might just feel like everything is an emergency and we are just trying to put out fires at all times. So yes, prioritization can be super, super tricky when it comes to setting boundaries because we might not really know what is really important and what is not so important. We might not ask the right questions or we might just feel like everything is an emergency and we are just trying to put out fires at all times. Another thing that you said is that you feel like you might be missing out on something, right? The fear of missing out, FOMO, is definitely a thing. And when it comes to work, we oftentimes want to prove ourselves. We want to prove to our boss or to our team that we are actually capable. So when we are asked to do something, we often say yes, because we want to make sure that not only do we please people, but that we also prove ourselves and that we are not really missing out on an amazing opportunity. Many of you agreed as well that when it comes to setting boundaries at work, it is super, super challenging to say no. Saying no is something that we haven't really learned to do because we want to please people, we want to help other people, but oftentimes we are forgetting ourselves in the process. So every time you are saying yes to another person, you are actually saying no to yourself. And with that comes, for example, long hours in the office or long hours in front of your computer because you're trying to please other people during the day and then after hours you're starting to work on your project. So if you want to create a better work-life balance, then it is really, really important that you are starting to say yes to yourself and no to other people. So I want to give you today a four-step, super, super simple process on how you can start setting boundaries at work. Okay, so now let's jump into the four-step process on how to set boundaries. Step number one is to be really clear on what your boundaries are. You need to define your boundaries. That is really, really important because let's be honest, how are you going to start setting boundaries if you don't really know what your boundaries are? So it can be many different things. You just need to be really clear on what your boundaries are. For example, your working hours. Maybe you want to be really clear that in the future, you always want to work from nine to five or nine to six or eight to five or whatever you want your working hours to be. And actually not only get other people's work done during this time, but get all of your work done. That can be a really clear boundary that you can set for yourself and start enforcing with other people. People. 
Another boundary could be that there are certain time blocks on your calendar that people cannot block time over. So in order to be really clear on that, obviously you need to think about what is important for me. What kind of time blocks do I require in order to make sure that I get all of my work done during my working hours. If you need a little bit more help with time management and being really clear on your own productivity process, there's a couple of different resources that I can recommend to you. First of all, I have a really good YouTube video on my channel about my productivity process, so make sure to check that one out. And I also have a five-day free time management course on my website that you can sign up for in order to really learn how to manage your time. This is super, super important and time management and setting boundaries are really really closely interconnected and thus both part of the peak performance method. So step number one, defining your boundaries, super super important. No matter what it is that is important for you, start to be really clear on that for you working hours, self-care time, breaks, time blocks. There are so many different examples on what your boundary can be. You just need to make sure that you're clear on it. And that's step number one. Step number two then is to create a boundary structure or to create a framework in order to make sure that you in the future enforce these boundaries. And there's a couple of different examples again that I want to share with you because I think it's super, super interesting to see what my clients are doing and obviously also what I'm doing in order to enforce boundaries. One of the things that I am doing is that I have a calendar available that I'm sending to my clients if they want to set up time with me. And I only available for meetings on Mondays and Wednesdays. So I don't even make myself available on any other days of the week because I just think it's super, super important that I have days where I can, for example, sit in front of the camera and record these videos. So that could be a framework on how to make sure that you are starting to enforce your boundaries and create some structure around it. It could be, for example, an out of office notification. So if you are feeling uncomfortable to leave the office at 6 p.m. in the evening and not be available anymore, then put an out of office notification in place and make sure that you're telling people, hey, until tomorrow morning, I am not available anymore. So people know what you're doing, right? It could also be that you are creating different types of email templates in order to communicate to people, which is obviously step three, we'll talk more about communication, but um, it's just kind of that framework that you're starting to put in place, first of all, which could be email, or it could be just a template in general, or a phrase that you want to start using in order to make sure that you're telling people that you're starting to set boundaries. All right, and that really, really brings me to the next topic and the next step, which is communicate. Obviously, you need to communicate your boundaries. This is super important. And with that said, it's also really important that you don't really have to over explain yourself. Because if you feel like you need to justify yourself, that might trigger other people and that might show them that you're maybe not very confident or secure in your messaging. So don't over explain yourself. Just be really, really clear and honest with them of why you are setting a boundary. And when we are starting to communicate boundaries, which I believe is probably the most difficult step, right? Because it is hard to say no to people. It's hard to say, I'm sorry, but I can't really do this right now because of X, Y, Z. Um, that's really hard. So communication is super important. And because we are having a hard time to say no to people because we like to please other people, it is really important, first of all, to be prepared because if you are prepared, you are able to react more rationally instead of emotionally to a situation. And it will also give you more confidence, second of all, because once you know what you want to say, you can really start practicing that. And it's a little bit all about preparation when it comes to setting boundaries, especially at the beginning. So I want you to really think about, okay, how can I start communicating my boundaries? And finally, the fourth simple step on how to set boundaries at work is to be vulnerable. You might be surprised about this step because it might not be super obvious at first why you should be vulnerable and what that has to do with setting boundaries. But 
I personally believe that the hardest thing about setting boundaries is to say no to people because we like to please people, right? We already established that in the last step. But when we are starting to be more vulnerable, we are actually opening ourselves up as a human being. And this is something that we are oftentimes forgetting when we are working, when we are interacting with other people in our corporation or in our company. We are oftentimes kind of like robots or machines and we forget that all of us are in the same place. All of us have personal issues or personal things going on. Doesn't even have to be an issue, right? But all of us have a life. So when you start setting boundaries, you are setting kind of the stage for opening yourself up and actually with that creating more trust with your stakeholders and clients. And it can be things that are super, super simple. So I want to give you three easy templates on what you can say or even what you can write in order to start integrating more vulnerability into your communication when you are starting to set boundaries. For example, to be honest, I'm a bit behind on my project and I'm nervous to get everything done. I would really love to meet you. Can we reschedule to XXX or can I help you in another way? Like for example, connect you with somebody else. I oftentimes have the reaction to this first tablet from people that are joining my workshops that they would love to receive a message like that. How honest but clear and to the point is this message? I really want to help you, but I'm nervous that I'm not getting everything done. People can totally relate to that. So then you are opening yourself up to really finding a solution together. So this is one way of how you can be a little bit more vulnerable in your communication. Here's another template. I can see the importance of the project. I'm also working on XYZ project. They all have looming deadlines. Which project would you like me to park so I can focus on this? This is a really good communication strategy when somebody is coming to you with another project that they're asking you to do. Because with that, you're basically communicating that you're not able to do it all in certain timelines, right? And sometimes we have these expectations of ourselves. So it's actually really good to have this open communication with your stakeholder in order to understand what is actually their timeline and what is more important. Something honestly that I really believe we are not doing enough at work. We are not communicating about priorities, what is actually important, what should we do first, what can we park, what can we maybe completely remove from our calendar or from our project to-do list because it's not important anymore. So start to be clear on communicating on a more regular basis. So now let me share the last template with you that I have prepared. Let me check my schedule and get back to you about doing that. I'm trying to be more cognizant about over committing. This is a really good template, a really good phrase that you can use in a meeting or in a conversation with somebody in order to buy yourself a little bit of time when you find it super, super difficult to say no in the moment. Because with that, you are actually already communicating to the person that you have a lot of things on your plate right now and you might not be able to take this on. So it already gives you a little bit of space and it really buys you time. So in order to really think about about this I really really like this template and I really hope that you're starting to integrate some of these sentences into your day-to-day -day. because let's be honest at the end of the day setting boundaries is a skill that you have to learn this is always the most important thing that I always say in all of my videos you need to first create awareness that you need to start making changes and once you have that awareness you can start taking action but I talked to one of you on Instagram yesterday and it was a really wonderful conversation because you said to me, oh, I really had this realization a few months ago that I'm really having too many things on my plate, but I had a really hard time to actually start setting a boundary and making a decision. And you know what? That is okay. If you're watching this video now and you might just only get into action three months from now, then that's okay because that is just your own personal process. And let's be honest, a process is not linear. It is not linear at all, but it is important that you remind yourself that every day is a new day to start again and to do something differently. Don't give up 
Even if you feel like you are a failure because you're thinking about these things but you're not doing them. It's, it's nothing like that, really. It is just really important that you are trusting this process and that you just trust that everything happens in the right moment. And so forget to be perfect from the start. I just wanted to share this really simple four-step process with you in order to make sure that you have somewhat of a guideline of where to start, right? Define, create, communicate, be vulnerable. Super, super simple. And with that, hopefully it will give you some more guidance on where to start. And I always say start small, set a small goal and then start to create that habit. And if you need a little bit more help with that, I have two videos on my YouTube channel that might help you with that. I have a video on setting goals and I have a video on how to create habits. So those might be really helpful for you in order to get started with the process. Don't give up. Always remember, a lack of boundaries creates a lack of respect. So when you start to set boundaries, you'll actually get more appreciation and more respect from your coworkers. I really, really hope that you found this video helpful today. Give me a thumbs up if you did, and I would really appreciate it if you would leave me a comment down below here on this YouTube video and tell us about what kind of rule are you going to start setting a boundary around? So what is that one thing, that definition that you want to start bringing more into your life? So step number one, okay? I look forward to reading your answers. And with that said, thank you so much for watching this video today. And I really hope to see you in the next one.